Well, as they say, technology is great when it works. So uh, if you're still with us, we appreciate it very much. Uh, let me say a few words now about some of the issues that President Trump failed to mention tonight. And that is the difference between what he promised the American people as a candidate and what he has delivered as a president. Many of you will recall that during his campaign, Donald Trump told the American people how he was going to provide health insurance for everybody with, quote unquote, much lower deductibles, end quote. That is what he promised working families all across this country during his campaign. But as president, he did exactly the opposite. Last year, he supported legislation that would have thrown up to 32 million people off of the health care they had, while at the same time substantially raising premiums for older Americans. The reality is that although we were able to beat back Trump's effort to repeal the Affordable Care Act, three million fewer Americans have health insurance today than before Trump took office. And that number will be going even higher in the coming months. I know I heard tonight many of my Republican colleagues standing up and applauding how great it is that millions of Americans are going to lose their health insurance. Not quite something that I understand. As you all recall during his campaign, Trump promised not to cut Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid. That is what he promised. As president, however, he supported a Republican budget resolution that proposed slashing Medicaid by $1 trillion and cutting Medicare by $500 billion. Further, President Trump's own budget called for cutting Social Security disability insurance by $64 billion. During Trump's campaign for president, he talked about how he was going to lower prescription drugs and take on the greed of the pharmaceutical industry, which he said was getting away with murder. And tonight we heard him talking again about the high cost of prescription drugs and saying, quote, one of my greatest priorities is to reduce the price of prescription drugs, end of quote. That's what he talks about. But as President Trump nominated Alex Azar, a former executive of the Eli Lilly Company, one of the largest drug companies in this country, to head up the Department of Health and Human Services. Trump spoke about how other countries' drugs cost far less. Yet he has done nothing to allow Americans to purchase less expensive prescription drugs from abroad or to require Medicare to negotiate drug prices, which he promised he would do when he ran for president. In other words, Mr. President, stop talking about the high cost of prescription drugs. Do something about it. During the campaign, Donald Trump told us, quote, the rich will not be gaining at all, end of quote, under his tax reform plan. The rich will not be gaining at all. Well, that was quite a whopper. As president, the tax reform legislation Trump signed into law a few weeks ago provides 83% of the benefits to the top 1%, drives up the deficit by $1.7 trillion, and raises taxes on 92 million middle-class families by the end of the decade. During his campaign for president, Trump talked about how he was going to take on the greed of Wall Street, which he said, quote, has caused tremendous problems for us, end quote. As president, not only has Trump not taken on Wall Street, he has appointed more Wall Street billionaires to his administration than any president in history. And now, on behalf of Wall Street, he is trying to repeal the modest provisions of the Dodd-Frank legislation, which provide consumer protections against Wall Street thievery. But what is also important to note is not just Trump's dishonesty. It is that tonight he avoided didn't say a word about some of the most important issues facing our country and the world. Now, I don't understand how a president of the United States can give a State of the Union speech and not mention climate change, 
No, Mr. Trump, climate change is not a hoax. It is a reality which is causing devastating harm all over our country and all over the world. And you are dead wrong when you appoint administrators at the EPA and other agencies who are trying to decimate environmental protection rules and slow down the transition to sustainable energy. How can a president of the United States in the year 2018 not discuss the disastrous Citizens United Supreme Court decision which allows billionaires like the Koch brothers to undermine American democracy by spending hundreds of millions of dollars to elect candidates who will represent the rich and the powerful? How can he not talk about Republican governors' efforts all across this country to undermine American democracy, suppress the vote, and make it harder for poor people or people of color to vote? How can he not talk about the fact that in a highly competitive global economy, hundreds of thousands of bright young people are unable to afford to go to college, while millions of others have come out of school deeply in debt and struggle with that debt every month of their lives? How can a president of the United States not talk about the inadequate funding and staffing at the Social Security Administration, which has resulted in thousands of people with disabilities dying because they did not get their claims processed in time? How can he not talk about the retirement crisis facing the working people of this country and the fact that over half of older workers have no retirement savings? We need to strengthen pensions in this country, not take them away from millions of workers. How can a president not talk about the reality that Russia, through cyber warfare, interfered in our election in 2016, is interfering in democratic elections all over the world, and according to his own CIA director, will likely interfere in the 2018 midterm elections that we will be holding. How do you not talk about that unless perhaps you have a very special relationship with Mr. Putin? Now let me say a few words about what Trump did talk about. Trump talked about DACA and immigration, but what he did not tell the American people is that he precipitated this crisis in September by repealing President Obama's executive order protecting the dreamers. We need to seriously address the issue of immigration, but that does not mean dividing families and reducing legal immigration by 25 to 50 percent. It surely does not mean forcing the taxpayers of our country to spend $25 billion on a wall that candidate Trump promised us that Mexico would pay for. And it definitely doesn't mean a racist immigration policy that excludes people of color from around the world. To my mind, this issue of protecting the dreamers is one of the great moral issues facing our country. It would be unspeakable and a moral stain on our nation if we turned our backs on these 800,000 young people who were born and raised in this country and who know no other home but the United States of America. And that's not just Bernie Sanders talking. Poll after poll after poll shows that over 80% of the American people believe that we should protect the legal status of these young people and provide them with a path toward citizenship. We need to pass the Bipartisan Dream Act, and we need to pass it now. President Trump tonight also talked about the need to rebuild our country's infrastructure, and he's right on that. But the proposal that he is bringing forth is dead wrong. Instead of spending $1.5 trillion over 10 years rebuilding our crumbling roads and bridges, 
What Trump wants to do is to encourage states to sell their infrastructure to Wall Street, to wealthy campaign contributors, and even to foreign governments. And how would Wall Street and these large corporations recoup their investments? They would make their money back by imposing massive new tolls and fees paid by American commuters and by homeowners. The reality is that Trump's plan to privatize our nation's infrastructure is an old idea that has never worked and never will work. Tonight, Donald Trump correctly talked about the need to address the opioid crisis. Well, I say to Donald Trump, you don't help people suffering from opioid addiction by cutting Medicaid by $1 trillion. If you are serious about dealing with this crisis, we need to expand Medicaid, not cut it. My fellow Americans, the simple truth is that according to virtually every poll, Donald Trump is the least popular president after one year in office of any president in modern American history. And the reason for that is pretty clear. The American people do not want a president who is compulsively dishonest, who is a bully, who actively represents the interests of the billionaire class, who is anti-science, and who is trying to divide us up based on the color of our skin, our nation, of origin, our religion, our gender, or our sexual orientation. That is not what the American people want. And that reality is the bad news that we have got to deal with. But the truth is, there is also a lot of good news out there. It's not just that so many of our people disagree with Trump's policies and his temperament and his behavior. It is that the vast majority of our people have a very different vision for the future of our country than what Trump and the Republican leadership are giving us. In an unprecedented way, we are witnessing today a revitalization of American democracy with more and more people standing up and fighting back. A little more than a year ago, we saw millions of people take to the streets for the women's marches. And a few weeks ago, in hundreds of cities and towns, not only in this country, but around the world, people once again took to the streets in the fight for social, economic, racial, and environmental justice. Further, we are seeing the growth of grassroots organizations and people from every conceivable background starting to run for office. And they're running for school board, city council, state legislature, the U.S. House, the U.S. Senate. In fact, we are starting to see the beginning of a political revolution, something long overdue. And these candidates from coast to coast are standing tall for a progressive agenda, an agenda that works for the working families of our country and not just the billionaire class. These candidates understand that the United States has got to join the rest of the industrialized world and guarantee health care to all as a right, not a privilege, through a Medicare for All single-payer program. Medicare for All is gaining enormous momentum all across the country. These candidates understand that at a time of massive income and wealth inequality, when the top one-tenth of one percent now owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent, we should not be giving tax breaks for billionaires, but demanding that they start paying their fair share of taxes. These candidates know that we need trade policies that benefit working people, not large multinational corporations. They know that we have got to take on the fossil fuel industry, transform our energy system, and move to sustainable energies like wind, solar, and geothermal. They know that we need a $15 an hour federal minimum wage, free tuition, at public colleges and universities, and universal child care. They understand that it is a woman who has the right to control her own body, not state 
and federal governments, and that women have the right to receive equal pay for equal work and work in a safe environment free from harassment. These candidates also know that if we are going to move forward successfully as a democracy, we need real criminal justice reform, and we need to finally address comprehensive immigration reform. Yes, believe me, I understand that the Koch brothers and their billionaire friends are planning to spend hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in the 2018 midterm elections supporting the Trump agenda and right-wing Republicans. They have the money, an unlimited amount of money, but we have the people. And when ordinary people stand up and fight for justice, there is nothing that we cannot accomplish. That has been the history of America, and that is our future. Thank you all very much, and good night.